the best startups might be considered slightly less extreme kinds of cults. The biggest difference is that cults tend to be fanatically wrong about something important, while people at successful startups are fanatically right about something that those outside of it have missed. Peter Thiel. Welcome to EOS Weekly. Today is Saturday, December 8th, 2018, and we've got some exciting news to share with you today. Just moments ago, at 1700 UTC time, the Telos launch group had a go-no-go call on whether to launch the Telos blockchain, and they voted go to launch the chain. This is a historic day for Telos and for the wider EOS ecosystem. Telos will be the third public EOS blockchain to go live after the mainnet and Warbly, and the second general purpose EOS blockchain after the mainnet, being that Warbly is specifically geared towards fintech. In this episode, we're going to talk through what happens next as part of this Telos launch. We're going to show you the timeline. We'll go through this quickly at first to give you the 10,000 foot view, but then we'll go through this in slow motion so as to get more into the details. So starting with today, Saturday, December 8th, the Telos launch group, the TLG, voted go. This means that 56 hours from now, the ABPs, the appointed block producers, which you see highlighted in yellow here, will launch the Telos network. So on or around December 11th, blocks will start being produced and account holders can start voting. That's December 11th UTC time. It'll actually be the evening of December 10th here in the States if it's exactly 56 hours. Once the ABPs reach the 1 million block mark, the chain automatically activates. It will take about seven days to get to 1 million blocks. So this will happen on or around December 18th. Activating the chain means the elected block producers take over for the ABPs, and account holders can then begin unstaking, staking, performing transfers, and any other activities. When the chain hits 6 million blocks, a snapshot is going to be taken called the Telos Original Snapshot, or sometimes called the Telos Official Original Snapshot. This is an important snapshot for Telos DAP airdrops. Exchanges are going to start supporting the Telos token about a week after the chain is activated so around late December or early January. The idea behind the Telos original snapshot is that it gives people about a month to adjust their Telos holdings, to accumulate Telos if they believe in the network, or to sell their tokens if they don't. You'll also need to have performed at least one transaction, voting, unstaking, transferring, whatever, in order to be included in this official snapshot. So that's important for everyone to take note of. The next big milestone is when Telos hits 63 million blocks. So this will be about a year from now. At the 63 million block mark, anyone who still hasn't used their Telos account at all, no staking, unstaking, no voting, no transfers, by that one year mark, they will lose their Telos tokens. This might sound harsh, but if you think about all the airdrops that require some sort of action on the user's part to participate, this is similar to that, it's just the reverse order. All right, let's go back and look at the timeline in a little more depth now. Starting with the Go vote we just had today on December 8th. One of the criticisms that Telos team has had about the mainnet is that the mainnet launched too early. There were foundational parts of the EOSIO code base, some of the essentials of a governed blockchain that weren't ready yet back in June. Things like the referendum system, the worker proposal system, a ratified constitution, you can see some of the pain points the mainnet is experiencing right now, which might not be directly due to their sticking with an aggressive launch schedule, but the mainnet could have corrected course more quickly if things like the referendum system was available at the time of launch. Of course, there are pros and cons to each approach. You learn a lot by launching. We're not saying one is better than the other. But Telos took the approach of making a launch checklist and sticking with it using their checklist to drive the timing of the launch instead of being date driven. 56 hours after the go vote puts the Telos launch date at December 11th. This is assuming they don't run into any snags during that 56 hour preparation window. One of the main things they'll be doing during those 56 hours is the accounting for the Telos founders reward pool, the TFRP. The Telos founders use the slicing pie equity splitting method to track contributions among the founding team. 
And those founders are going to get additional Telos tokens in the Genesis snapshot based on those contributions. As long as they have all this sorted out by the end of that 56 hour window and no other obstacles pop up, they launch the chain. What this means is the Telos ABPs, the appointed block producers, will launch the network. If you recall from the mainnet launch, it was a secret who the appointed block producer was. In fact, we still don't know who it was. It was agreed to that it would remain a secret forever. With Telos, we have a group of ABPs and we know who they are. You can see all the technical details of what the ABPs will be doing during this launch phase in this Medium post here. The link to this is in the show notes below. But basically, the role of the ABP is to bring things online and get the network to the point where token holders can start voting. As we all know, Telos has capped the tokens per account at 40,000 Telos. This is in an effort to curb whale influence. So the Genesis block for Telos will be very similar to the mainnet snapshot, except for that 40,000 cap and the additional tokens going to the founders, as we mentioned earlier. The ABPs are responsible for the first 1 million blocks. But once it hits a million, which will be six or seven days after the launch, the chain activates. And this is when the elected BPs take control of the network. Some of the ABPs will likely retain their spot and keep going producing blocks as an elected BP, but this isn't guaranteed. What is guaranteed is that none of these candidates will qualify to be a BP unless they meet the minimum requirements listed out in this document here the Telos Block Producer Minimum Requirements Doc. BPs are automatically tested to see if they meet these specifications. If they fail to meet the basics, they are automatically disqualified from being a BP. This is one of the exciting enhancements that the Telos team made, which the mainnet will be watching closely. If we do like how it's working, the mainnet could potentially even use the same code from the Telos code base to implement this. This is one of the beautiful things about having a variety of EOSIO blockchains. We can share ideas, try things out on one chain first, and share code when we like how something's working. The easiest way to get involved with electing the first set of Telos BPs is to download and, uh, download and install the Squirrel wallet. That's S-Q-R-L. Squirrel is the official Telos wallet, though several wallets will be supporting Telos in the weeks and months ahead. Michael from Telos Miami put a great video together on Squirrel, and we'll link to that video below. He describes how Squirrel is a multi-chain wallet that lets users connect to the mainnet, the test nets, and of course Telos once it activates, and eventually to Warbly as well. Besides the basic staking and unstaking, BP voting, transferring tokens, buying and selling RAM, etc., the Squirrel wallet also enables account holders to participate in the more advanced Telos features, the governance features, such as creating and voting on worker proposals, creating and voting on referenda, and so on. Telos will have these governance features ready to go when the chain activates. Squirrel is a fork of the EOS Voter wallet, and EOS Voter, like Squirrel, is also going to add multi-chain support for the various EOS IO chains in the coming weeks. Scatter is also going to support Telos, as it shows here on the Telos website. Other wallets are likely to follow suit. Once the Telos chain is activated on or around December 18th, it'll take about a week or so before the Telos token is available on exchanges. There are several exchanges lined up to support the Telos token, and they are Chainrift, which will likely be the first, Dexios, Findex, and Swap Online. And just a few days ago, a fifth exchange was added to that list. EOS Detroit formed a partnership with the decentralized exchange WhaleX. This is an Asian-based exchange and could bring some good attention to Telos in the Asian crypto community. Now, something we should mention here is that there is a cryptocurrency called Telos Coin, as you can see here on CoinMarketCap. This is not the Telos token you're looking for. You'll know you've got the right Telos token when it's spelled T-L-O-S, no E. So this is the token we're talking about if you're planning to look for it on exchanges. Not, I repeat, not the Telos Coin we showed you here. This is the wrong one. So once Telos hits the 6 million block mark, an important snapshot will be taken. We're estimating this will be around January 16th, but if this is off, we'll give you an updated target date in future episodes. 
As we mentioned before, this is an important snapshot for Telos DAP airdrops, but you'll only be included in this snapshot if you've done some kind of activity in your Telos account, such as voting, prior to this 6 million block milestone. So if you're getting your Telos tokens because you participated in the EOS ICO on Ethereum, you may want to do something like install the Squirrel wallet and then vote for some of the BPs and make sure you do this before block 6 million. There's already been some announcements of dApps planning to launch on Telos. One of those is Unbiased by EOS Green. Unbiased is an incentivized social platform and search engine. Its purpose is to help fight misleading news while also giving people control over their own personal data. Another one is Chestnut. You might remember Chestnut from the London Hackathon where they got second place. They also won the best UX prize. Chestnut is going to be on both the mainnet and on Telos. So this is going to be an interesting phenomenon to watch, where for certain types of dApps, it'll make sense to have a presence across multiple chains. We're likely to hear more of these announcements of dApps launching on Telos now that we've got the official Go vote. At the Scaling Blockchain Conference a few weeks ago in San Francisco, Douglas Horn described Telos as an on-ramp for EOS, as the friendly, less expensive starting point for teams that are just getting started in the blockchain world and don't have deep pockets. Douglas Horn is the author of the Telos white paper, and many of the Telos enhancements were architected by him. He is also the founder of the Good Block block producer. We don't know yet in what price range the Telos token will be trading once it goes live on these exchanges. We'll be learning a lot in the coming weeks when trading starts. But it's a fair assumption that it'll be less expensive to run a dApp on top of Telos when compared to the mainnet, at least for the foreseeable future. This will help Telos to draw in those smaller projects that are on a limited budget. Douglas Horn and his team at GoodBlock are making it even more attractive to launch on Telos by offering free CPU, net, and RAM grants for innovative projects that qualify. The game Telos is playing here is the same one that the mainnet is playing. They're trying to position themselves so as to attract in as many dApps as possible. Telos is going to need both dApps as well as investors to get the value of the Telos token price up. Because right out of the gates, these block producers are going to be operating at a loss. Even the mainnet BPs are operating at a loss right now. So the race is on to attract the world into these blockchains so that we can hit that critical point as soon as possible where BPs are profitable. Telos's strategy for doing this is to position itself as the on-ramp to attract in the young, bootstrapping, scrappy startups that have a lot of promise for growth, and to bring in end users and get some good publicity in the process so as to attract some investors as well. The next few weeks are going to be exciting ones. As we've mentioned, the dates in this video are approximations and may change based on how each stage goes. If you want to follow along with all of this in real time and make sure you have a current time frame on all these events, you can follow Telos on Twitter, subscribe to Telos on Medium. They do a lot of good media roundups and weekly reports. And every Wednesday, there's a live Telos Hangout that you can join. Douglas Horn hosts these himself, so you can ask him questions directly at these things. And this Friday, December 14th, is the Telos World 2018 Virtual Conference. So the timing of this is perfect. It'll be right in between the launch and the activation. And of course, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to our channel here at EOS Weekly. We'll be watching Telos closely and reporting on these developments. So, best of luck to the Telos launch group and the ABPs with all the activities over the next few days and weeks. And to the Telos block producer candidates with getting voted into an active BP spot. What an exciting way to end the year. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. We hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit the like button. That helps us with the search rankings. And we'll see you next week, right here on EOS Weekly.